living this great life, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, but deep inside when you look in the mirror at night, you know you are sad. And you are sad because your soul hurts, because you need God. When God becomes your ally, the no moral man is worth fear or even respect. I will destroy any moral man on the planet. I fear one person and that is God alone. So God just broke your heart on purpose to show you that the way you're living your life and the man you are simply are not good enough. What have you changed since? You need to get up and work so hard that even in the eyes of God, he is proud of you. God loves his creations, which show him their true potential and beauty by getting up and trying your absolute best and becoming a man of, of moral standing. He will reward you and bless you. You are wasting your energy. Heartbreak is unlimited motivation. If I was heartbroken, I'd be in the gym every morning. I'd be a beast. I'd be running. I'd be working. I couldn't sleep. I'd be an absolute animal. I became me through tedious, arduous, difficult, never-ending work. You're failing God. If you were the best version of yourself and you were waking up every day trying your absolute best to be a unique and special individual, then you would not be failing God any longer and he would not play you with this bad luck. And you need to become a formidable force of man that cannot be replaced or replicated anywhere else on God's green earth. That's what you must do. This is going to repeat endlessly. It's a cycle that will not fucking change until you take the message from God and become the man you're supposed to be. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man. You get to build who you are. Right? You can decide if you want to be a funny comedian or a musician or a kickboxing world champion or fight the Matrix. You can decide whatever you want to be. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try and you actually want it and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're going to get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist. I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out. Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. Because if you actually wanted it and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. There's not a car I can't have. There's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have. At a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. The world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. No. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. 
This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one. But the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a fucking loser. No problem. Stay yeah. a loser. Don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting. I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard. Winners only. If you're the person who wakes up, does work, is fantastic at it, and then takes three days off, you're going to lose. They say that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And it's completely true. You have to be consistent to decide, are you the kind of person who wants to make a lot of money in this life and live a life of freedom? Or are you the kind of person who wants to look back when he's 30 on his 20s or 40 on his 30s and look at that decade and go, what did I do with that decade? Well, I didn't get rich. I didn't travel the world and live like they do and take confidential. What did I do? Well, I had a day off here, a day off there, a bunch of nothing days that amalgamate into this decade of nothingness and you're just wasting your time. If you want to win, you need to be consistent. You don't need to be the smartest, not at all, but you have to be the guy who's there day after day. And I guarantee you, I will guarantee you right now, IQ has nothing to do with how successful you'll be as a person. What is gonna determine how successful you're gonna be is, are you there every single day? Are you doing what you're supposed to do day after day? I can also apply this to sales. I knew guys who were terrible on the phone. Back in my day on sales, you used to have to call companies. I was smooth, I was the best. We had some other guys who were smooth, they'd land a deal, go buy a nice car, whatever, take a few days off, take it easy. We had people who were terrible. When I say terrible, I mean they had a thick Indian accent, didn't speak English that well, didn't know the script that well, didn't know the answers, but they were always in the top 20% of the company because they just hammered the phone. They just were on it. They needed to feed their family in Bangladesh. They didn't give a fuck. They were just calling. That's it, day after day. When you were on lunch break, he's on the phone. You can win with hard work alone. And that's what's amazing about the universe when I say that. God will give you anything you truly want. If you truly want money and you truly try hard, you truly listen to us, you are gonna have as much money as you could possibly ever desire. But if you think you want money, but you kind of want something else, or if you're arrogant, or if you're lazy, you're gonna end up somewhere in the middle if you're lucky and talented. And if you're not talented, you're gonna end up in the middle. So you don't wanna be a normal dude, because when you're a normal dude, you're a loser. You don't get to do amazing things. What's interesting is none of you have had a normal life. You've had a unique and individual life path. The things you've gone through, nobody else on the planet has gone through. You've lived certain experiences, the school you went to, the time you were picked on in that class, the girl who broke your heart. Every single thing you've been through is unique, like a fingerprint, a completely unique life. And somehow you've managed to stay completely non-unique. It's almost impressive how you can have a completely unique life experience and still end up average. The fuck did you do that? Your life's different than everyone else's and you still look and talk and sound and act like everybody else. Like a dummy. That happened because you have not paid enough attention into analyzing your life. Self-analysis. Every single time something good happens to you, every single time bad, something bad happened to you, you've not spent enough human hours sitting and thinking and trying to work out why it happened how to make sure the good things happen more often, how to make sure the bad things happen less, less often. What was God trying to teach you? He was trying to teach you something. You think, oh, I just got scared. No, God sent you a lesson, but you didn't pay any attention to it. Do you understand? Everything that's happened to you has been sent from God himself to guide you on a unique path, everything good and everything bad. And the point of the unique path is that you end up a unique person, but you are failing. God is unhappy because you're not trying hard enough. God hates the lazy. God wants people who try. You understand? You know what I can't stand when I hear Christians say, if it was the Lord's will, I would have had some money by now. No, 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 you can't dump that on God. He said faith without works is dead. I'm just asking you, man, to try something new.
Now, if that ain't what you want to do, then good luck. You keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. I would try something else if I was y'all. Look at somebody say, it'll work if you work it. Work it. I started my church with seven people in a building cooking ribs and chicken to pay the rent. When they were calling me the boy pastor and they were making fun of me and said I would never be nothing. I worked a job and I preached on the side and I put my check in the offering to keep the doors open and whatever we had left we cooked up and sold dinners to get another month to fight again. We preach with our lights off. We preach with our water off to get to where we are right now. And I came to tell you today, whatever it is you are trying to build, if you won't sacrifice for it, if you won't be hungry for it, if you won't sweat for it, if you won't bury your pride and put in the work for it, you don't have the right to get it until you will stay up at night and go to school while other people are watching the game and read and work and pray to get to be whoever it is you are trying to be. You have not got the right. You need guts. You can't be this without guts. I preached a year and a half in an empty room. Forget about my dream. What is your dream? What is your goal? And how much, what will you put into it in order to get what you're trying to get from God? How much? It will only work if you work it. If this message spoke to you as a man, you can either cower down and give up and let your wife become your mama or you can stand up like a grown man and handle your business get out of your feelings people will not work for emotional people who have meltdowns and freak out and hold grudges you have to be bigger than that we don't have time to deal with your attitudes so stop popping your neck Hold your head up, get yourself together, and get ready to fight the good fight of faith. I've been wondering why it didn't happen. I didn't realize I had to serve to lead. Nobody ever taught me how much it costs. Greatness is expensive. Succession is expensive. This does not work like your phone. This does not work like an app. You have to work it. And it doesn't happen overnight for most people. Yes, there are one or two people, but out of millions of people, those are only one or two. The rest of us have to work it. It will work if you work. Every discouraged person, every person who's been feeling like it's just not working, it's just not working. This was your message. If I never preach again, this was your message. It will work if you work it. You think you can wish your way up. You cannot wish your way up. It'll work if you work it. Remember these words. It will work if you work it. I rebuke every giving up spirit. I rebuke every quitting spirit. I rebuke every spirit of forlornment. I rebuke every spirit of frustration. The devil is a lie. He's trying to talk you out of your future and tell you you cannot do what God called you to do. The dreams God has placed in your heart are not going to come to pass without opposition, without delays. There will be plenty of opportunities to get discouraged, think that it's not meant to be. If you give up after the first time or the 30th time, what that really means is you didn't want it bad enough. There should be something you're believing for that you are relentless. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I'm not going to stop believing. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I'm going to keep pursuing what God put in my heart. Normal people would give up but you're not normal, you want it on another level. How bad do you want what God has put in your heart? 
bad enough to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening? Do you want it bad enough to keep pursuing even when circumstances say it's not going to happen? If you're overcome by problems, you let circumstances push you down, people talk you out of it, you're not going to have the strength to sustain where God is taking you. You have to be more determined than the opposition. If you give up every time things don't go your way, you didn't want it bad enough. Are you letting people talk you out of what God put in your heart? You can't get well. You saw the report. You can't start that business. Let that go in one ear and out the other. Ignore what they're saying. If you're going to see what you're believing for, you have to be willing to do what other people won't do. Other people may not believe when it looks impossible. They may get discouraged, tell you, don't bother praying. No use getting your hopes up. You're wasting your time. Say, God, this looks impossible, but I know you can do the impossible. The odds are against me, but God, I know you are for me. Well, I dated two girls. Both of them told me I wasn't their type. I don't think I'll ever get married. You don't want it bad enough. There are several million other girls out there. How bad do you want to get out of debt? Bad enough to not buy things you can't afford? Bad enough to honor God by tithing your income? How bad do you want that promotion? Bad enough to get to work early? Bad enough to take that online course to sharpen your skills? How bad do you want your children to stay on the right course? We don't think twice about having to get our children up for school. Their schooling is incredibly important. But I could argue that their spiritual life is even more important. <laughs> Learning to honor God as a person of excellence and integrity, those seeds planted in them will affect them for the rest of their lives. How bad do you want your marriage, your relationships to work out? Bad enough to clean up a mess that you didn't make? There are new levels in front of us, but much of it depends on how bad we want it. You can pray, God, help me to feel better. God, I'm always so tired. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you living stressed and worried? Then God will do what you're asking. But you can't override natural laws and expect to live a blessed, healthy life. When he sees you doing all you can, then he'll make things happen that you can. Now do your part and distinguish yourself. Be willing to do what others won't do. Yes, it takes discipline, but the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. It's hard to lay off the junk food, things that are not good for you. That pain is less than the pain of not being healthy. One of the saddest things is to come to the end of life and wonder what I could have become. What if I would have broken away from those friends that were causing me to compromise? Where would I be? What if I would have taken that step of faith in my career and not played it safe all the time? You don't have to wonder. You can start right now. The question is, do you want it bad enough? Make this decision. I am not going to live complacent passive. I'm going to pursue what God put in my heart. The difference between a dream and a wish is a wish is something you just hope it happens, but a dream you put actions behind. Faith without works is dead. Wishing isn't going to get you anywhere. The people that succeed don't always have the most talent, the most opportunity Many times, they simply want it more than others.